Welcome to video 3 for week 10. In the previous videos, I've done more of a conceptual notion of, of extending the derivative. Here I want to do a geometric notion of extending the derivative. The geometric interpretation of the single variable derivative was the slope of a tangent line. In higher dimensions, we no longer have tangent lines, but we do have tangent objects. For a scalar field of two variables, the graph is a surface in R3, as opposed to a curve in R2, like the graph of a single variable function. And the tangent object to such a surface is a tangent plane. I have a, now have a whole plane that will touch the surface at one point, the same way that a tangent line touched a single variable graph at a point. So if the derivative was the slope of the tangent line, then somehow the derivative in higher dimensions should be the description of the tangent plane, or if you go further in, in, into R3 and R4 and higher, the tangent hyperplane to those graphs. So I want to tell you how to describe tangent planes for scalar fields of two variables, mostly, and a little bit about the generalization to higher dimensions as a way of taking the geometric notion of the derivative of the slope of a tangent line and extending that. In order to do this, I need to come up with a description of a plane. So I'm going to start with a scalar field of two variables, and I want a point in the domain, and above that point I have a, b, f of a, b in R3 is going to be a point on the graph of the function. Remember, the graph of the function has both the inputs and the outputs, so I can have a point on the graph of the function. At that point, I want to describe the tangent plane. Planes are described by normals. I can't get the normal directly, but I can get two local directions that are on the tangent plane, and those come from the partial derivatives in the variables x and y. If I move in the x direction, well then the function is going to be moving in the z direction, changing according to the partial derivative in x. That tells us how quickly the function is changing. The function is the height of the graph as we move in x. And likewise, as we move in y, the partial derivative in y will tell us how quickly the height is changing according to that motion in y. So this is in the x direction, this is in the y direction, and then the height changes according to the partial derivatives. Those are our two local directions of change, our local tangent directions. If I have two directions on a plane, local, local directions, then their cross product is going to be the normal. So I'll take this, take this, take the cross product, and that's going to give me this vector, which is going to be the normal to the tangent plane. All right, I have a normal to the tangent plane calculated by this cross product. That means that I can take the components of the normal and put them into an equation of the plane, multiply them by the variables x, y, and z, and make it equal to a constant. That's our algorithm for calculating the equation of a plane. But in order to find the constant, I need a point on the plane. Well, a point on the plane is a, b, f of a, b, which I said before. That is the point on the graph. That's the point where we're considering the tangent plane as an object. So if I replace um, x with the x-coordinate a, replace y with the y-coordinate b, replace z with the z-coordinate f of a, b, so make those replacements here, here, and here, then that gives me an expression for the constant. This is a little bit annoying to do in general because it doesn't look like a nice constant, but a and b are numbers, so these partial derivatives are all numbers. So this is, this is just some number for the constant for the equation of this plane. And if I put that in for the left side, then I get this whole huge complicated expression for the equation of the plane. I suppose the constant showed up over here. I flipped these around, but uh, that goes over here, constant goes over here. What I get if I simplify this expression that I've just put a box around and sort of group terms together, I can get z minus the function value f of a, b is equal to this expression. So again, I have only these three variables. This is, this is a line. The rest of these things are constants determined by the choice of the point a, b. And I can do this for any point a, b. Uh, this is what I'm going to use for the rest of the video. So I'm going to put this equation this form of the equation of a tangent plane up there on the left. So notice this is a weird generalization of the slope of a tangent line, but it is still somehow in the same flavor. I have now an equation of a tangent plane instead of a description of a tangent line, and its equation is determined by the partial derivatives. So we're still taking derivatives, evaluating them at points, and using that to give the description of the tangent object, even if it is a lot more complicated than it was before. 
Let me do an example. Here's a scalar field. Here are the two partial derivatives. And I want to consider the point 1, 1 and say above 1, 1, what is the equation of the tangent plane to the graph of this function? Well, I evaluate the function at 1, 1 to get 1 third. I evaluate the partial derivatives. Uh, the partial derivative x gives me negative 2 ninths. The partial derivative in y also gives me negative 2 ninths. Then I look at the equation form for the equation of the tangent plane. I put in all the pieces, z minus the third, x minus one, y minus one, partial derivatives go there. And if you want, you can rearrange that to look like a more conventional notion for the uh, equation of a plane with something times x plus something times y plus something times z equals some constant. And you could multiply by nine to scale that if you wished. Write it however you wish. But this form does give me the equation of this tangent plane. So whatever this surface looks like above one one, sort of at the point one one, one third in R3, I have a local description of a plane with this equation that will touch the surface, the graph of the function at 1, 1, 1, 3 as a tangent plane, the same way that a tangent line touches the graph of a single variable object. And it has many of the same interpretations of that tangent line, which we'll get to a little bit in the last video for this week. Let me do another example, same scalar field, so same partial derivatives. Now I'm evaluating at 0, 0, so I want to know above 0, 0, so at 0, 0, 1, what does this look like? Uh, the function is 1 there, which is why I have a 1 in the z-coordinate. The partial derivatives both evaluate to 0, so if I put all of these pieces into the equation of the tangent plane, into the form I have there, I get z minus 1, the partial derivatives are 0, the coordinates of the input are 0. This just turns into the plane z equals 1, which is a horizontal flat plane. And that actually sort of makes sense, because this is a kind of... The graph of this function looks a little bit like a hill, and the top of the hill is right above the origin. So the top of the hill should have a flat tangent plane. The local directions just go out horizontally from every point at the top of this hill. Lastly, this does generalize into as many dimensions as you want. If you want to look at a scalar field in three dimensions, you're going to have three local directions instead of two. So these local directions are set up the same way we had before. We move in x, we move in y, we move in z. We have the matching partial. We haven't talked about an algorithm, but there is a way to put together three local directions to give the equation of a hyperplane in R4. The graph of this function, since its input is three dimensions, its output is one dimension, its graph is in R4. So the normal to the hyperplane in R4 that touches the graph of the function is given very much like the normal was before for two variable situations. Now we just have additionally the partial in Z. And I could extend this in as many dimensions as I want. You get the same pattern for the normal. This is getting really hard to visualize, but we can still talk about these things. A scalar field in n dimensions, its graph is in n plus one dimensions. And in that in that space, in that n plus one dimensional space, there are tangent hyperplanes to the graph of the function. And the normals of those tangent hyperplanes are given by this expression in the partial derivatives.